today we're going to be creating a simple little application that is uh, a checklist. So think that you're at work and you have to check items off on a list to make sure that you're actually checking stuff. Um, this is uh, basically a friend, a coworker asked me how hard is it to write an application that is a checklist that checks things are complete. Um, and when people ask questions like that, it's very difficult to answer because you can write something simple like that in a couple of minutes. but Programming is like artwork. You know, they say that art is never complete, just abandoned. Software is the same thing. You can always make improvements. Right in this video, we're going to create a simple, simple little script, um, which could definitely be improved upon. Uh, but hopefully it only takes a couple minutes. I'm going to wing this. I haven't actually, uh, lots of times when I do tutorials, I run through it first, but this should be very basic. So hopefully I don't hit any stumbling blocks. In the next video, we will do something a bit more graphical interface-y. <laughs> um, but this is just to show that you can create a fairly good application very quick, but of course you can always make improvements. So I have a file called items.list. It's uh, just a plain text file with just a few items on here that you check the tire pressure on four different tires, you check the headlights, strobe lights, and, and backup lights on the vehicle. So let's go ahead and start writing our program. I'll just call this uh, checklist. So Vim is my text editor. You can use whatever texture you like. I use Vim because I like it and I've got a lot of uh, templates I've created for it so I can easily write out code without having to type everything out as you'll see in the next video. We'll just call this checklist.sh and here the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to type in our shebang line. This is just a line that tells the computer what type of program this is. It's going to use the bash interpreter. Um, so now, first thing we're probably going to want is the user, so your name. And my opinion is in most cases, if you're in a business environment, you probably have logins or should have logins for each of your users. And so you should never have to enter your name. It should know who you are based on who you're logged in as. So what we can do here is we can just say set the name variable equal to, and here we can say dollar sign user. And I'll put that in quotations just to be safe. Um, and actually, we should actually have a welcome message. So I'm just going to say echo welcome to the checklist, randomly capitalizing stuff for no reason. There we go. And I can say echo welcome dollar sign name and one time and one time only you have to make that executable unless you move it to another system then you might have to make it executable again then I can just say dot slash the name of the file and it's going to say welcome and then you know welcome to the checklist welcome metalx1000 because that is my username on this system now obviously in a real life scenario you should have a database of all your employees and so it should be able to grab your real name from that database based on your username on who, as who you're logged in as. Uh, but just to add a little bit to this tutorial, I have created a name.list with a list of random names and it has three different columns here. It has an employee number in the first column, a first name and a last name. So let's go ahead and, um, well, actually before we even do that, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back into our program here. Let's say, again, that we're not going based on your username. What we're going to want is to ask the user for the name. So we'll just say, uh, echo, please enter your name. And I'm gonna put no new line character there, so we do this all in one line. And instead of setting it equal to your user, we are going to say, read name. Uh, and then I deleted this line, but I'll go back and just say, welcome, dollar sign name. Now, I should be able to run that same program. It should say, welcome to the checklist, please enter your name, I'll enter Chris. I'll hit enter and it says, welcome Chris. Great. You want to, in my opinion, assume the end user is an idiot. <laughs> uh, and not let them type anything in when you can avoid it. So again, if you can pull their username based on their login credentials, great. If not, then anytime they want to enter something, if you know what they might be entering, it should be something you pull from a list or a database. Uh, because uh, let's say I try to sort this and today I write my name as Chris and then tomorrow I write as Christopher, you know? Uh, you want things to be consistent. So again, I have a file here. It's just a plain text file with a list of names. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose name from that. Now again, I can loop through this 
and have you select from a list. I can display them all. I can have you type in your employee number and pull it. But I'm going to use an application called Fuzzy Finder. It's FCF. If you have this FZF file or program on your computer, uh, it is an amazing program that allows you to filter stuff out quickly. So I can, you know, cat to display those list of names. But if I pipe it like this into FCS, it's going to give me that list of names, and not only can I scroll through them, but I can quickly type in a name. And anytime, my opinion, that you have more than, say, 20 items in a list, you should be able to type to filter to search through that, because no one should have to scroll through a big long list trying to find what they're looking for. So you do that, and it returns whatever you selected. So let's go back into our checklist program here. And instead of asking them for their name in that aspect, what we can do here is we can say, please enter your name. And instead of uh, reading the name this way, I can say name. And I can say the name equals the output of our command, which is going to be cat our name dot list into FCS. And in this case, I am going to run that. It's going to, well, the way it has set up, it just doesn't, we miss our message here of entering their name. But this is going to be a quick program. Again, you can clean it up a lot in the future, but let's say my name is um, uh, Logan Butler. I can type in B-U-T like that. I can type in Logan like that, and I can cho then choose. And right there, it then replies, uh, please enter your name. We didn't have a new line character there for because we've changed how we enter that, but we're going to say, welcome, employee number five, Logan Butler. And of course, we can break that up uh, a bit more if we wanted to. Uh, I can come in here. First of all, we can do that. And then what we can do is I can cut dash D and I can say delimiter of that and I can say field two comma three. Now, if I run this and I type that properly, I should again be able to take Logan instead of saying, well, sorry, that should be inside this parentheses here. Boom, Logan, choose it. And this time it avoids the, the employee number. It says Logan, comma, Butler, which is a little weird because the commas there, so you would think that the first name is the last name. Uh, again, my point here is you can do things quick, but you can keep on improving upon it. But right now we've got their name, Logan Butler. Um, if I wanted to, just to, again, to clean that up, I can say, replace the comma with just an empty space here. So now if I say Logan, now it's saying, welcome Logan Butler. So again, just showing the point of this tutorial, again, that you can continuously make small improvements. You can write a program. I could have been done with the entire application if I had just created it, but we're going through different options, making it better. Now we need to create a checklist of what we want to go through. And again, we have our items uh, in our file called items.list. So if I do that, now I run this, it's just going to ask us our name. Again, I'll just choose that same name. And there's no file that because it's item.list. I don't know why I called it that. I should have called it items. Run it. I'm Logan. And then it lists all the items. What we're going to do is we're going to throw this into a loop. While read item, do, done. And then we're going to say echo dollar sign item so that will display the item on the screen and then we want to have the user input is it good is it bad or is it not applicable so maybe you're checking something you know and that thing is not on that particular truck uh, you can put an A for that so what we're going to do here is it's going to list the item uh, and then we're going to read and we're going to say I for item, I guess. It's just a variable. It can be whatever you want. Uh, and then we're going to say, okay, if dollar sign I equals N, we're going to then do something. Actually, for I'm going to do it like this. L if and else, and then end our if then statement. So if it's n, what are we going to do? So we're going to be creating a log file. So we're going to put everything in the log here. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to also want to get the date stamp that we were talking about earlier. And we're going to do that for each one of these loops. 
So right up here, I'm going to say D equals, and we'll just say, give us the output of date, but then we'll do T for timestamp, and we'll give it the output of date uh, plus percent S, which will give us those seconds we talked about earlier. So now we have our timestamp, our date stamp, our item. We're going to ask the user whose name we already have, whether it's good or not. So here I should be able to put in this dollar sign I equals NA. Then, okay. We're going to create our log file and we should put that in a variable up at the top. So we're just going to say log, oops, log equals item.log. Actually, let's like make it a CSV file. You'll see why in a minute. Uh, CSV is a comma separated uh, file. So it's going to have different columns that are separated by um, commas. And in fact, just to make things easier here, I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to get the full name with the employee number there. So here I'm going to say, okay, if the user puts n, well then we're going to echo uh, our dollar sign timestamp, comma dollar sign date, comma dollar sign uh, we'll say name who checked it, which will actually be putting in their employee number, their first name and last name, comma. Then we're going to give that output that the user gave, whether it was good or not. But we also need to put the item in there, which is item. So we should probably put that first. We'll say item dollar dollar sign I. And we're going to put that, append it, so two ampersands there, into log, and that should be dollar sign log. Okay. Now, we're going to do the same thing for here. Uh, but, you know, instead of, well, really, I don't have to do an if-then statement unless I want to expand. Again, so really, let's just for example, I'm just going to delete that, delete that, delete that, delete that, delete that, and go like this. And we should be good, I actually think. So we should check list. I am, again, we'll just say, I'll just say, I'll say that I'm uh, Elijah Flores. And we loop through, it didn't do, it didn't, it didn't ask me stuff here. So it should ask me while well, read item do this, read, why is it not giving me the option to, again, I usually run through these things before I do videos, we're, we are catting the list, we are looping through, while read, item, do, and we're echoing the item and then we're asking it to read, so I don't know, let's Change this to output. Shouldn't make a difference. Somebody watching the video is now going, oh, Chris, you're, you're doing this wrong. <laughs> so uh, give me a second. I'm going to pause here just so you're not watching me forever try to figure this out. OK, so apparently I have never done this before. <laughs> um, when you're using the read command in a while loop, you're going to want to um, add this little greater than or less than symbol to your div TTY. Uh, I guess just to prevent the item that you're echoing here to being piped into there. Uh, I can't say I've, I remember ever doing that before. Uh, so I must have never done it before, which is interesting. Um, I must normally do it a different way that I can't think of right now. Anyway, so again, let's just quickly run over this. We're echoing out our list and reading each item. Then we're going to, I mean, the date, timestamp, we're echoing the item and then waiting for the user input. And in this particular case, we're just going to dump that timestamp, date stamp, the user's uh, employee number and name, uh, the item they're checking, and whatever they entered into it. So again, this is very simple. I can go check uh, our checklist application. It's going to ask me who I am. I'll just choose again, Logan Butler. Uh, it's going to ask me, you know, is the tire pressure on the front driver side good? Uh, and I can say yes. Is the rear good? Yes. If it's not good, I can say no. Uh, I can say no. And then for headlights, I can say NA. Maybe we don't have headlights. Uh, I can say yes. I can say yes. And that's all been put into our item.csv, which is, I don't know why I called it that, uh, item.csv, right there. 
uh, and it put each item with the with the stamp and whether it was good or not or whatever the input is. So again, going back to what I was saying before, and I started getting ahead of myself, is here we're putting whatever the user inputs into that item, which might be good because they can type comments and stuff if you want. But going back to what we were kind of doing before, we can say if and here I can say dollar sign I equals N. We can have it do something else. Elif, which will also have this. And we're going to change that to, we'll say, NA. And down here, we will say YYP. I'm just going to copy this. Let's talk about what I just did. Here we're gonna say, right now, the input's going in as the input. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, we're gonna change I in this case to equal problem, whatever we want it to say when they put an N. Uh, and here, if they say NA, we can say I now equals AN, NA, not App, I don't even know how to say Excel optical, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna change that to to be that, just so it's a little bit clearer. Uh, and if it's anything else, uh, it can input what they put, or we can just say I equals good. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our script again. And if I wrote everything right, it's gonna ask us who is who we are. This time I'll say that I'm Mason Diaz, and the front driver side. I can put anything if it's good, or I can just hit enter. I hit enter. Enter, enter, enter. Oh, the headlights, uh, there's a problem. I'm gonna say N. Uh, strobe lights, I'm gonna say NA. Backup lights are good. Now, if I cat out our item.csv, you can see that that last column now is, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Oh, there's a problem with that. Uh, this is not applicable and that's good. Now, since we did a CSV file with the commas, we can easily look at this as a spreadsheet. Cause maybe you don't want to look at it like this uh, in the, the, just a the text like that. Maybe you want to be able to see it a little bit clearer. Uh, you can easily use whatever program, Excel or LibreOffice. I can say uh, item.csv. And when it opens up, it's going to make sure that uh, we have, we're formatting this properly, which our default should be good. We're going to say, okay. And there we go. We have everything in this. So, um, Obviously, we could also add in asking for the truck or station that they're at or whatever. Uh, I can now sort things. I can sort things and say, oh, you know, show me all things that are uh, have problems. And I can check the date. Has it been fixed? Blah, blah, blah. Again, we're just dumping this into just a log file. In real life, you're probably going to want to put this into a database. But we're not getting that advanced in this, in this tutorial. Because, uh, again, the point of this tutorial is how quickly you can create an application. Now, we've been going for about 18 minutes here. Uh, uh, not counting the little issue I had. Uh, but in reality, if I wasn't sitting here and explaining this, it would take me five minutes to write this. So yeah, I can write a checklist program that gets all the information we need, timestamps, dates, uh, username, employee numbers, you know, the items they're checking, whether they're good or not. I could have done all that in five minutes, boom, been done. Now, obviously I can keep on working on this script and making it better and making improvements. Uh, for example, here we're going through every item in the checklist one at a time in the set order. It'd be nice if I can go in a different order. Maybe I wanna check something else out first, but I can't because I have to go in the order that I'm outputting this list. I could change that. I could use probably Fuzzy Finder, the FZF program, so that you're filtering through the list and you can search through the list, check an item, and then it will remove it from your list and you can continue searching like that, or you can go through an order. It, it, you know, that would take another, not even five minutes for me to add to this program. But again, a application, when you ask someone how hard is it to write an application, most basic, especially for, for business and office applications, you can write something in a couple of minutes and have it functioning, but obviously you wanna add to it. And again, uh, doing a text-based application like this is great. It's super fast. It will run on, you can give me a computer 30 years old and it'll still run on it. Uh, you can, uh, use something like SSH to log into the server. That way you have the user's credentials. You're doing everything encrypted. You know it's very secure. Um, there's a lot of advantages to it. But I also get, uh, and even if you were to do this on a phone, I could SSH in. And again, all I have to do is keep hitting the enter button when things are good. And then when there's a problem, just hit and enter. It's not that much, you know, it's not super pretty, but I could do this on my phone uh, with no modifications. Um, 
But I get, it's 2018, people like flashy buttons and checklists. And that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. Hopefully, it doesn't take much longer. You know, this took 20 minutes. Should be able to write a pretty nice application. Uh, of course, using uh, interfaces that I've used before. So I have a lot of templates to speed things up. And as a programmer, you're hopefully accumulate those sort of things, little scripts to uh, improve your time because a lot of programming is repetitive. Uh, so that's what we'll look at in the next video is making a nice little uh, interface uh, that looks nice on a desktop mobile device and allows you to not even have to touch the keyboard if you don't want, just checking boxes and picking things from lists. So I hope you look forward to that. Uh, I hope that uh, this made sense. Again, this wasn't like a step-by-step -step tutorial. Kind of was, but I went kind of fast. But the point was on how you can continuously improve your program. Even if you write a program in a couple of minutes, you could spend years improving upon it. I mean, look at things like Google. I mean, you go to their web page, it's their logo and a search bar. And that's what it was 20 years ago. But they're still working on it. They've made improvements to it, obviously, especially the back end. Uh, but it's a very basic interface that continuously is worked upon. So all applications are like that. You know, it just gets to a point where you're like, I'm happy with this. I'm not going to improve it anymore until, you know, you decide to add something new to it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day.